Welcome once again, brand new Monday morning, and it's time to give you a quick uh, review of the, uh, what's making the headlines this morning all across the country. Uh, we're going to be having an, uh, our analysis with uh, Ademola Kingbola, the publisher of the Podium Media. Good morning once again. Uh, good morning. I'm very sure he'll be joining us in a bit. We're having a, a bit of a challenge with uh, Zoom this morning. Fingers crossed that it won't last. Uh, we start with the Punch newspaper. Uh, we start with this one. Uh, 20 doctors dead. NMA submits proposal to FG January. Six prevention training. Travelers from UK, US worsening coronavirus cases. That's uh, NMA president. 22 FCT coronavirus patients on oxygen in critical condition, says UATH. That's not a good um, opening there. It worries me, though, that we've lost 20 doctors uh, to really coronavirus. Really, and really we're sad. just now getting to it because they are the front line, yeah. are the front line of this. Uh, may their souls rest in peace and may their work not be in vain. Um, still on the Punch newspaper. For after a long while, I'm seeing the name of Oshomole in the news. Today, it's about Oshomole can't subvert people's will through judiciary. That's Shwaibu, I guess the deputy governor of Edo State. 14 insurers to pay 9.7 billion naira for NSAR's riot claims. We also have lawyers gave 9.4 billion naira bribes to judges in three years. Ooh. That's ICPC. I think we talked about that. Yes, we, we had a conversation ago. about this not long yeah, ago. Not long yeah, and ago. One, you know, the thing from that conversation, we, one of the things that we didn't um, get to entirely verify was, you know, if it was cash, you know, at, at hand. If, you know, if these people actually took the money or these are funds that were offered. Um, and so, when you hear a figure like that, nine point four billion. No, I, I think I think uh, there was there were clarification from Barista on um, Monday, Bunny, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it was more both what was offered, not and, and only what was, what was uh, take, actually received. taken. Yeah, so you it know, was a collation of it's, all of it that. It still makes you want to know uh, if we're just going to read a story like that and move on. Because of course we're not. The, the first story we heard wasn't from the ICPC. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there must be some sort of investigation ongoing at the moment for the ICPC to come up to confirm that this is what yes. has happened. So, so. so, so let, let's extend this to permanent secretaries. Let's extend this to you know government agencies. Go go all all across board because it's a fight against corruption. It's a it's not. This is not even a talk about it being one sided now. This is let's see how much corruption really is going on in the country. And it's not really just in, you know, the National Assembly or in government coffers, in you know, offices around us, you know, in CMDs offices in, in, in hospitals, in principals um, offices, in the vice chancellor's office, everywhere around us. How much corruption is going on? How many people have paid to get their children to, uh, you know, into universities? How many people have paid to get their, you know, in, uh, but into the, the jobs? Fact, the fact remains that we take it one step at a time. Yes. This administration says they've been working on corruption since day one. Yes. And we also see, you know, moves here and there, even though it's not, it's not been consolidated. And we see cases being thrown out on a technicality, maybe because the prosecuting council did not do what they were supposed to do. Absolutely. Let's hope that um, going forward, that when they're trying these cases they will have watertight case so the um, defendants cannot find loopholes Absolutely. to get away um, let, let's uh, take a further look at what's on the front page of the punch newspaper this morning um, we have traders lament as fire guts plant market in Lagos uh, I'll be taking a look at that a little more extensively. There are pictures of the devastation that followed um, in the wake of that um, a fire situation. Also on the front page, we have police hold 85-year-old Oshuman for allegedly impregnating girl 12. Airlines will pay $3,500 passenger for COVID-19 guidelines violation. That's uh, NCAA. Amotekun arrests two as equity abductors reduce demand to $10 million. Man kills Quara worshipper over Christmas bangers on mosque premises. I saw that story when I woke up this morning and... Um, 
I don't um, understand why people persist. We, we talk about our leaders on a daily basis. Just look at something as simple as not throwing bangers or knockouts, however you call, whatever you choose to call them. Mm. Um, during these festivities, it's been repeatedly reiterated by security agencies because of the possible, you know, somebody might hear that and think it's banger, uh, banger. whereas somebody's operating, killing somebody or stealing from someone, yet people persist. And then we talk about our leaders. I mean, look at, remove the tadpole in your eyes before you look at the stuff in someone else's eyes. We cannot follow simple instruction. You mentioned earlier, uh, there is COVID-19 restrictions on partying, but Nigerians choose to party in spite of this restriction. What more do you want the government to do? Advice has been given. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. We cannot do it. And then we point fingers when our leaders are not doing uh, what they're supposed to do. So on, on what basis are we doing that? Uh, so, so what I would respond to that is, you know, it, it, it also is not um, justification for death. Um, yes. No, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. on the flip side of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, you would expect that there would be some celebration. It, it's, it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, we also have agreed that Nigerians are not very good at following rules, you know, and all of that. But I feel... Yes, you know, the person may have been wrong. Um, I don't know if there has been any enforcement on, on any laws with regards to fireworks in Nigeria uh, till today. Because, there are some things yes, that, the government I may mean, have said there, there, there are some things that, you know, just... I, I, st I told you sometime um, during this uh, Christmas celebration um, that we've had the breakfast that I actually stopped going to crossover because service of, and of, Christmas fireworks. service from my teen years because of the scare of when you're... It's not even at the church. When you're working home, you're in groups. I've seen people whose parts of their body was burnt because they threw uh, fireworks, you mm. know. So these are basic things. Yes, we must celebrate. Let's look at other ways that we can celebrate. Somebody has lost his life, probably, over an altercation about whether you should use it or whether you shouldn't use it. Uh, you should read that story. Hopefully, um, there will be some um, listening ear from us. And I would also say that if there is a proper investigation and it is not a case of actual self-defense, then the killer should go to jail. Um, yeah. Regardless of how he feels about you, hold, you, know, you hold a lot of hope in our justice system. <laughs> uh, Just saying. <laughs> these are, <laughs> these are we're the still hoping funds. that we can get um, Mr. Debola. Um, on this morning, network permitting. Otherwise, we continue to uh, take a look at these. Okay. Uh, Mr. Debola, can you hear us? Okay. We we still cannot hear him. Uh, let's right. see. Let's quickly move to the. Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning and see what we can find over there. Uh, Kuka's verdict on Buhari gets more support. It was one of the things that was spoken about over the weekend also, and that is a response from uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, where he was, of course, uh, countering uh, Bishop uh, Matthew Kuka and saying that he should, um, yes, you know, um, speaking truth to power is welcome, but at the same time, uh, religious leaders and, and, and the likes should uh, make sure that their messages about the presidency is not embarrassing or it is not, you know, laced with anger or hatred and, and some of all of that. So um, there's a back and forth, you know, to, uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Kuka is getting his support, you know, on one end and is also getting his criticism from the government's end. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what more of that story, you know, we can, we can share. Edo State Deputy Governor Anoshiomole continue the war of attrition Nigerians groan as pandemic brings economy to its knees. Recession deepens, Naira falters, inflation soars. Also, Bajawa saved me from being killed by Dimka, says uh, former President Ulusha Gomo Basanjo. And uh, farmers say maize will be scarce next year. And that is where I'm going to lose my mind. Because if I don't have boiled corn to eat sometime next year, I would be very upset with the Nigerian government and with <laughs> everybody involved. If you can't get me bored, corn and pier next year, then you people will see how angry I can be. Uh, we have an joking. association of corn eaters <laughs> at Cross TV Africa. I am, I am the vice. He is the president. I'm the vice president. He is the president <laughs> of corn uh, eaters that's when here. You, that's when you will know that my cup is full with this country. Just don't give me corn next year. Anyway, also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, how to tackle Heather's farmers' conflict, and that is from uh, Niger State Governor. Uh, we also have here, uh, as COVID-19 spreads, Lagos, Oshun, and Rivers get tough. 
26 out of 86 patients currently surviving through oxygen in Abuja, says the FCTA. Lagos shuts landmark and 12 other centers to commence legal action. Uh, Wiki threatens another lockdown in rivers. And uh, moving on from that story, we could also um, see, of course, a follow-up to the Bishop uh, Matthew Kuka story. It says, Kuka spoke truth to power, says Adibanjo. Uh, Buhari has wrecked the economy, and that's from the PDP. And the NCFN says, stop using pul uh, pulpit for political gains. Nigeria not near a failed state, and that is from the APC. Um, I, I think... The reactions coming is because of the personality involved. Uh, mm -hmm. Bishop Kuka is known to speak his mind. Sometimes yes. it doesn't always sit well um, with, uh, I mean, the generality of the people. Um, I, I, if, if I remember how it, um, what I read from that story, he is saying that if it was someone else that got into a position and knocked Buhari, and this what we have now is what we have, the situation will be different. That's a roundabout way of mm -hmm. what he is saying. And then, you know, the defense counsel are all over the place. Um, um, what is he saying? Why is he saying what he's saying? Bottom line is, whatever the man said, he is entitled to it. Yes. Um, is he factual enough? Are there areas that we dispute? Um, if there are areas, hand pick them. But you can't in totality condemn what the man has said. And for those that are playing politics with what he said, you know, the opposition is capitalizing on the personality of the man and, you know, tackling the government. On your part, aside opposing um, in the media, what else have you done? That your opposition party doesn't mean you can help improve the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to help alleviate, aside from talking? We all have a responsibility here. You know, when we're shining the torchlight on others, we should shine it on ourselves Absolutely. as well. Um, the, the current administration has um, shown over time that it has uh, issues dealing with criticism, you know, you know dealing with uh, dissenting voices, um, especially when they are very, very popular figures. They've always, always and always been, you know, very, 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 you know, they've had the same response every time that there is someone who is criticizing their, um, their mode of you know, governing Nigeria in the last couple of years. Uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka, yes, because of how much of a personality he is in the North and across Nigeria, will expectedly get the backlash that is needed. But like you've said, you know, it, it, it's, it goes beyond um, countering a person or trying to, you know, uh, shut a person up or, you know, you know, uh, attacking a person because he's speaking up. It, what's important, and I believe what's important for the Nigerian people, is being able to show by the work that you are doing and by your, your actions as a government that what he's saying is completely false. Um, so, you know, it's either a political thing, you know, um, coming from Bishop Matthew Kuka, or he is just speaking what he feels. Um, and that's what I feel the Nigerian government needs to do more of, all right? Show the Nigerian people that what Matthew Kuka is saying is completely false and some of the things that he's accusing the government of, you know, are, are untrue. Show, you know, don't say, show. Let, let, right. let the people feel it. Let's take a look at The Guardian. Um, cement price crisis deepens in states. Abuja, dealers blame scarcity on transportation export. Uh, we also have manufacturers say it's gas pricing, haulage costs. Uh, there are more. Airlines, travelers face fresh huddles as new protocols begin today. Uh, UK, South African uh, passengers to get extra travel permits uh, before boarding to Nigeria. Um, NCAA rolls out conditions, so 3,500 fine per defaulter. Stakeholders, IATA insist on on arrival rapid testing at airports. There are more stories uh, from The Guardian this morning. Nigeria sports need honest leadership, not system to grow. How racketeering climate change others make local rice unaffordable. That's a staple food. Financial Times editorial reflects realities in Nigeria, says PDP. Bandit scale ex-lawmaker, wife, son, two others in Benue. Um, there are more on uh, travelers facing fresh huddles as new protocols begin uh, today. Um, I, I had, I think, um, if it's not um, Evan Sufeli, legal practitioner, mm -hmm. talk about the fact that we don't have a debt of laws. What we have 
is implementation. Yeah, problem we, don't, we don't have a lack of people who can speak, you know. We don't have a lack, a, a, a lack of people who have fantastic ideas, but our problem always lies with implementation. Who will build the cart? We talk and we talk. Okay, yes, there's supposed to be a protocol in place already for people arriving in this country, but how much compliance has there been? We've gotten to the point where people are faking COVID-19 tests just to travel and go in and come out. We've gotten to the point where people are sconed. We've gotten to the point where people put fake contact details. And again, I go back to what I said earlier. We talk about the government like yes. a religion. What about us? Yes. And I, How I, I are we playing you. our role to grow this country? Even in the minutest way. I, I totally agree with you. Nigerians have you know, very terrible attitude with um, obeying laws and, and, and doing what is right. We always try to cut corners in everything that we do, even at the traffic lights, in the hospitals, and in the banks. We're always trying to cut corners. Um, there is a lot of things that you might accuse the government of with regards to COVID-19 tests and at the airports, people have said that it's really just a payment thing. You know, they don't even enforce that you actually do the test. They just want you to pay. Um, and once you, you've paid, you're free to go. They tell you, you know, to go do it in whichever hospital that you choose, um, according to people who have passed through the airport or arrived in Nigeria, which I feel is wrong and, and you know, should be fixed. Um, but at the same time, we as Nigerians um, need to understand the danger that we put ourselves in when we continue to cut corners, when we continue to evade taxation, when we continue to evade some of these laws that should create a better society for us. So yes, we, we are equally in as, um, you know, we, we share as much blame um, as the government, um, you know, does. I would, I, I've always said that one of the reasons why it is also very easy for Nigerians to do this, and this is where the government comes in, is because of the failure of the government to create the institutions to, to put uh, checks and balances where necessary. The reason a Nigerian can live for 20 years of his life without actually paying tax, the reason a Nigerian can live for 10 years of his life without paying electricity bills any day because he could hang a wire someplace, is because there's none of these actual checks and balances that you know will put you in place. Um, it took a while for necessary. me to re readjust my mind to the importance of paying taxes, to be honest, because mm -hmm. when I was much, much younger and somebody deducts my salary for taxes, I get furious yes. because I'm like, why would you be deducted? I don't have light. There is no road. What am I, what is somebody using my taxes yeah. for? Well, you know, it, it ha it's, it's a process. We, we all need to get to the point where we know it's no longer about the government, but our responsibility, whether do, they use the it right or thing. not, do the right thing, yeah. pay your taxes. But you, but you also wouldn't blame a person who says, I've been paying taxes all my life. I still don't have steady electricity. I still don't have roads. Still don't have healthcare. Mm -hmm. Still yeah, don't we're, have we're good exactly education. The same you know, thing. I mean, you you also wouldn't blame them when they you know say things like that. So everybody has an equal share of the blame. I agree. I, I completely think so. And and when you beat a traffic light. Knowing that nobody is going to That's stop like you or, 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 or arrest you, you're this not going to pay any fine. You would do it again tomorrow. All right, I guess that's how much time will permit us. But let me just quickly highlight this screamer on business day. He said, COVID 19 FX interest rate top defining moments for real estate in 2020. And that's another segment of the um, uh, economy. That's 2020 in review on the front page for you. I will wrap things up. Unfortunately, we couldn't connect with Mr. Ademola, uh, the, um, Mr. Ademola, Ademola. To, to join us uh, for the review. Hopefully, he'll be able to join. He had to stay up. He's in the US, yes. so it's very early for him. In spite of that, the network wouldn't permit. That's the challenge with technology. We're hoping going forward on the breakfast, uh, we would have those challenges. To stay with us more for you here.